A lot of people point out the fact that you were very strongly against Obamacare until the Air Force One ride. A lot of people have many concerns about that. So I was wondering if you could address those concerns and what, what is your thought about Obamacare uh, right now as it's been practiced? Well, uh, first of all, Dennis Kucinich, burner! Yeah, baby! Making it happen. And I'm here by the one and only Dennis Kucinich, congressman, former presidential candidate. Dennis, thank you so much for being out here. Um, we talked to you before. We brought to you a first responder named David Miller during a presidential debate. So I actually snuck him in. And out of all the presidential candidates, you were the only one to respond positively, keep your word, meet with us in New York City, and help draft the legislation. So I can't say enough positive things about Dennis Kucinich, really a noble statesman doing amazing work. But now you're no longer a congressman. Can you tell us about some of the projects and things you're up to right now? I uh, do a lot of writing. Uh, you'll see my. Uh post on Huffington as well as The Guardian. I'm uh, uh, a political analyst uh, for Fox and offering a different point of view. And I, um, uh, matter of fact, uh, you know, I'll be on this Sunday uh, to present some analysis of what's going on in the Middle East. I also do a lot of public speaking and uh, starting in October, I'll, uh, over a period of a couple of months, I'll be making about a 14 state tour and I'm, you know, still active politically. And my, you know, I work and support my uh, wife's efforts as well. She's produced two movies this summer uh, that are out there. One's GMO, OMG, and the other one is uh, Hot Water about uranium contamination of water supplies. So we have a, you know, we're busy. We do a lot of traveling. Life's good. Great to be here at Burning Man. This is, uh, this is the future right here. I was going to ask you, what's your experience at Burning Man? What are you taking from it? Because it's such a weird, wild, amazing thing all at once coming together here in the middle of the desert, 70,000 people. Uh, what brought you here and what are your uh, kind of uh, perspectives of Burning Man? I, I uh, met someone at Almadal, at, uh, Almadal, which is a political festival in Gotland Island in Sweden a couple months ago. He told me about Burning Man and I said, I want to go. The minute I arrived here and stepped out onto the playa, I felt like I was at home. Because my, my, um, my awareness of the world and the way I think about the world relates to the kind of uh, uh, freedom that exists here. Uh, the, the boundarylessness, the, the vast, excuse me, the vastness that you see, the no limits, no boundaries. I, I, that's me, that's, I like that, and so I feel right at home here. Do you have a playa name? Uh, I've, I've been given a couple different names. One was PW for Peace Warrior, and the other one was Charge, <laughs> as opposed to Pay Cash, I guess. I don't know, but but anyhow, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, uh, I'm really excited about having had the chance to spend time here and to meet some of the most creative people in the world who are here. This is this is uh, an ex it's hard even to describe it, yeah. except that the common theme is creativity that goes to the farthest reaches of imagination. Yeah, this is my first year here too. I've been named naysayer. And it was just wonderful listening to you talk here about spirituality, consciousness, bringing your thoughts in a good, positive way because your thoughts become your words and then your words become your action, just like that famous quote. But you told us about practicing some kind of specific yoga. Can you tell us about that and what it has brought to your life? Well, it's called Agni Yoga, which is fire yoga. And it's not like, you know, as I said, exercise, and, but it, it really deals with uh, constant meditations and, uh, and, and, pra and putting into practice spiritual principles that have to do with connecting with people through the heart. So it's uh, something I've been uh, studying for 30 years and it works for me, you know, and it's just, it's, a, it's an approach that, um, that has uh, real depth and um, and a way of looking at the world which includes everyone and that uh, dismisses a lot of the illusions that pass for the way things are but don't have to be that way. Yeah. Your actions in Congress have definitely spoken to the principles and philosophies that you have studied. And um, one thing I wanted to bring up to you just to clarify, this is my last kind of question. Um, a, a lot of people point out the fact that you were very strongly against Obamacare until the Air Force One ride. A lot of people have many concerns about that. So I was wondering if you could address those concerns and what, what is your thought about Obamacare uh, right now as it's been practiced? Well, uh, first of all, Cleveland's only an hour away by air. Uh, I've made 
hundreds of commercial flights back and forth to Cleveland over the time I've served in Congress. And I've probably driven a hundred times back and forth. So I don't need Air Force One to take me to Cleveland. The president invited me on the flight and we had a, um, a long discussion, uh, an hour and 15 minutes, where he pointed out what he was trying to do and the importance of his position. Um, I didn't agree with it. I'm for a single payer. Uh, but it turned out that I, you know, I was a, a pivotal vote. And I wanted, you know, I don't like to see, I didn't like the system we had four years ago because of uh, the fact that it's for profit. This proposal of, uh, of the Affordable Care Act brought about reform within the context of a for-profit system. I want a not-for-profit system, but I did not want to defeat it so that then people would use the defeat as a benchmark to say you can't you, you'll never be able to get a not-for-profit system. Yeah. I see it as an intermediate step uh, because, let's face it, the insurance companies are still raising the rates. Yeah. They're, yeah. Still, they're still finding ways to limit service. Uh, Health care is a right in a democratic society. It should not be a privilege based on ability to pay. And so while some, some positive developments occurred, people under 26 being able to be covered under parents' policies, uh, you know, they, they, they can't deny people uh, uh, help if they, have, uh, if they need catastrophic care. Look, let's face it, it's still not a good system. But um, uh, my, I, I continue to support a bill that I wrote to create universal single-payer not-for-profit health care. Only until we have a not-for-profit system will I be satisfied. But that was a moment where I saw it as an intermediate step. And the president didn't know how I was going to vote until I announced it publicly. Because I, it, nothing he said convinced me. I, saw, I, I made the decision based on something entirely different. Yeah. Thank you so much for clearing that up for us because there's been a lot of concerns. But obviously your actions and what you're doing now is very noteworthy. The speech you gave was very beautiful. Dennis, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. And now, one candidate has mentioned this up to this ca campaign. Uh, actually, I have talked about 9-11 a lot. No, about 9-11 first responders. There's nothing on your website about it. There's no position. Why is it this country taking care of me? Why is it taking care of my family? What is wrong with these people?